Stand up, stand up for Jesus. You know, folks, that's a great old hymn. But most Christians today will only sing that hymn sitting down. In other words, they won't take a stand for the real Jesus. But we do want to thank you for tuning into the True Gospel broadcast here on International Shortwave Radio. I'm Sam Adams, pastor of the Independence Baptist Church in Bellevue, Florida. You can find us online at www.independencebaptist.com. We also have a sermon audio webpage at www.sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Sam Adams. Our mission on this broadcast is to confront the apostasy of these last days and to bring the one true gospel and the one true faith to a world that has been flooded with false gospels, false religions, damning deceptions, and the satanic lies of false prophets, whereby billions of souls will be condemned to an eternal hell that could have been avoided if they had just listened and obeyed the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, as found on the pages of God's Word, the Bible. Do you understand, dear friend, that there are many who call themselves Christian and who do believe they're saved, but who will find out one day that they were deceived, that the church or the ritual or the priesthood they thought would save them did not bring true salvation? That's what the Lord Jesus himself said, as recorded in Matthew chapter 7. In verse 21, he said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The Lord Jesus himself said, That many will call him Lord, and claim to do works in his name, and will call themselves Christian who never possessed true salvation. And just a few verses before that, he said in verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate. By the way, that means the narrow gate. He said, For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Dear friend, that says two things. First, it says that God is not in the business of saving all mankind. There is no universal salvation. And of all the faith systems and religions in this world, of which there are many, there is only one way that is right. And all the others are wrong. The second thing that Jesus says here is that most of the people in this world are on the wrong road. The road to hell. And it's not because they want to go to hell, although some reprobates actually say they do. But for most of those, it's because they've been deceived by false prophets preaching false gospels. That's why, in the very next verse, the Lord Jesus said this, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Most of the people in this world will not have eternal life. They're on the broad road that leads to destruction, to an eternal hell, because they followed a false prophet and a false religion. Whether that false prophet was Mohammed, and his violent satanic death cult known as Islam, or whether that false prophet was Charles Darwin and the false religion of godless evolution and humanism, or even one of the many false prophets calling themselves Christians, but who pervert God's word and preach false gospels so they can attract huge crowds, men like Joel Osteen or Robert Schuller, or even the Pope of Rome. God's word, the Bible, is replete with multiple warnings about false prophets. And it also says these false prophets must be called out and identified so they can be avoided. False prophets, Jesus said, come in sheep's clothing. That means claiming to be Christian, appearing to be righteous, but are in fact mouthpieces for the devil, being used to deceive and to damn the masses of people that are following that broad road to destruction. That brings me now to the false prophet I want to talk about in this broadcast, a man who is venerated and revered and loved by millions the world over by Christians and Catholics alike, and even by Masons and Mormons and Muslims, the man regarded by most pop Christians not only as a minister of righteousness, but as the greatest evangelist of our time, despite the fact that this beloved evangelist speaks with a forked tongue out of both sides of his mouth and changes his message to suit his audience and denies a literal interpretation of Scripture, denies the reality of a literal hell, and denies that Catholicism is a false gospel, or that Muslims and Hindus must come to Christ to be saved. As some may have already guessed, I'm referring to the Reverend Dr. Billy Graham, who has devoted his life to preaching a gospel of compromise with false religion. While Billy Graham may have been ordained as a Southern Baptist minister 
and may have started out his ministry as such way back in the 1940s. Mr. Graham long ago sold out and betrayed the true gospel, and in doing so literally became a minister of Satan, leading many people to and leaving many people on that broad road that leads to destruction, the very road that the Lord Jesus said many people are on who call themselves Christian and who even call Jesus Christ their Lord. If you haven't noticed, Billy Graham has been back in the news in the last couple of weeks, having celebrated his 95th birthday on November 7, with the release of a video titled My Hope America, and what the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is calling Billy Graham's final sermon. This video is aired on Fox News Channel, set to be aired on dozens of Christian and other TV stations, and also at thousands of churches across the country. I took some time to watch the video very carefully online, and I have to say that sadly, if this is Mr. Graham's final sermon, it will certainly not be his final legacy. Because while he does present a partial gospel message in the video that does include the cross of Christ and the need for blood atonement for the forgiveness of sins and the need for repentance from sin in order to come to Christ, what is sadly missing from this video is Mr. Graham's own repentance or renouncement of having publicly denied this very message on multiple occasions over the past several decades. What's also sadly lacking in this video as was missing in all of his crusade sermons over the past several decades, was anything doctrinally divisive that would in any way hinder his long-standing agenda of unifying Protestants and Catholics and even Mormons together, which in fact is a very Masonic agenda to unite the religions of the world in one melting pot of global religion. I'm too short for time here to list all of the many, many things Billy Graham has done to deny Christ and his true gospel. None of which, by the way, he has ever recanted or renounced. But I want you to please listen to just a short list that I have here of well-documented examples showing Billy Graham's apostasy into universalism, unified global religion, and that broad road that leads to destruction. First of all, Billy Graham's fall into apostasy began over 60 years ago in the 1950s with his embrace of Roman Catholicism as an acceptable form of Christianity. And what's wrong with that, you ask? What's wrong with that is that Roman Catholicism is a form of counterfeit Christianity that teaches salvation through ritual, salvation through the sacraments, salvation through a priesthood, that God's grace is not accessed by faith in Christ alone, as the Bible plainly teaches, but only through the satanic rituals of the Catholic Church. Roman Catholicism teaches that Christ's one-time death on the cross was not sufficient, that his salvation is not permanent. That God's grace is only a temporary empowerment, access through the sacraments, that believers must come back to the priest for a weekly refueling of God's grace as dispensed through the Mass, whereby Christ is offered over and over in a weekly sacrifice for sin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an abominable form of Babylonian idolatry and is completely unbiblical. That's why, by the way, in 1948, before Billy Graham turned apostate, he correctly stated the three gravest menaces faced by Orthodox Christianity are Communism, Roman Catholicism, and Mohammedism. But by the 1960s, however, Billy Graham had completely changed his tune. He said that Communist Mao Zedong's eight precepts are basically the same as the Ten Commandments, that Muhammad Ali's beliefs in Islam are something we could all believe, and he praised the Roman Catholic Mass as a very beautiful thing. No, it's not a beautiful thing, Billy. It's idolatry. It's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that Jesus said in Revelation 2 he hates. We could go on for hours citing examples of Graham's unification with Rome. But here's just a short list. In 1957, San Francisco News quoted Graham as saying, Anyone who makes a decision at our meetings is seen later and referred to a local clergyman, Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish. By the way, in most, if not all, of Billy Graham's crusades, all the Catholics coming forward at the invitation were quickly and methodically directed to one of hundreds of Catholic priests waiting as counselors to keep these poor souls in the clutches of that false religion. For one of Graham's Portland, Oregon crusades, the Catholic Archdiocese supplied 6,000 of the 10,000 counselors that were needed. For a crusade in Denver, Graham had a Catholic priest supervise the 6,000 that were trained as counselors. Just as I am without one plea, but that the priest or the Pope could please save me? In the Catholic Herald of June 3, 1966, Billy Graham is cited as being a friend of the Jesuits in the United States. The Jesuits, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, are the Vatican's militant 
counter-reformation agents founded by Ignatius of Loyola in 1541 to infiltrate the governments of this world and to maintain their loyalty to the papacy, to the Vatican. And the last thing any Bible-believing, born-again Christian should want to be referred to as a friend of the Jesuits. In 1967, Billy Graham received an honorary doctorate from the Catholic priest at Belmont Abbey in Belmont, North Carolina. He referred to this as a time when Protestants and Catholics could meet together and greet each other as brothers, whereas ten years ago they could not. He told his audience there that the gospel that founded this college is the same gospel which I preach today. The executive vice president of that college, that Catholic college, the Reverend Cuthbert E. Allen of the Order of St. Benedict, said this in a letter dated March 19, 1965. He said, I am the one who, being acquainted with Billy Graham, invited him to speak to the fathers, the, the nuns, the students, and invited guests. Billy Graham gave an inspiring and theologically sound address that may have been given by the Bishop Fulton J. Sheen or any other Catholic preacher. He said, I have followed Billy Graham's career, and I must emphasize that he has been more Catholic than otherwise. And I say this not in a partisan manner, but as a matter of fact. He goes on and says, Knowing the tremendous influence of Billy Graham among Protestants, and now the realization and acknowledgement among Catholics of his devout and sincere appeal to the teachings of Christ, which he alone preaches, I would state that he could bring Catholics and Protestants together in a healthy ecumenic spirit. He continues, So I am well pleased then to answer your question. Billy Graham is preaching a moral and evangelical theology most acceptable to Catholics. That was in 1965, ladies and gentlemen. So Billy Graham's apostasy is not new and is not a result of senility or old age. He has been an apostate for decades. In 1972, Billy Graham received the International Franciscan Award in Minneapolis, given by the Franciscan Friars for true ecumenism. At that meeting, Graham said of Francis of Assisi, a man who believed in salvation by helping the poor and who blessed and baptized his farm animals, Billy Graham said this, While I am not worthy to touch the shoelaces of St. Francis, yet this same Christ that called Francis in the 13th century also called me to be one of his servants in the 20th century. On October 11, 1979, Graham appeared as a guest on the Phil Donahue Show and said of Pope John Paul II, I think the American people are looking for a leader, a moral and spiritual leader that believes something. And he, meaning Pope John Paul II, does. He doesn't mince words on a single subject. As a matter of fact, his subject in Boston was really an evangelical address in which he had asked the people to come to Christ, to give their life to Christ. Billy says this, I said, thank God I've got somebody to quote now with some real authority. Wait a minute, Billy. What about the Bible? What about the words of the Lord Jesus? What about the many words of the Lord Jesus that condemns the religion that the Pope espouses? You know, folks, I thought Billy Graham was supposed to be a Baptist. Mr. Graham, what happened to the Baptist doctrine of the sole authority of the Scriptures? What happened to Deuteronomy 4.2 and Revelation 22.18-19? It says we're not to add to or take away from God's Word. What happened to 2 Timothy 3.17? that says, through the Scriptures, the man of God is perfect, complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I'll tell you what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Graham's one-time trust in the Scriptures went out the window when he sold out the true faith for filthy lucre became a Roman Catholic, if not a full-blown Jesuit, and made the Pope his king rather than the Lord Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Graham is an emissary of the Vatican, a deceiver and a false prophet. But by the way, Billy Graham's apostasy does not end at his unity with the Roman Catholic religion. He's gone on to deny the reality of hell and eternal judgment, and further has denied that those of other religions must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved literally preaching that all roads lead to heaven. In his latest video, in his final sermon, Billy does mention that there is a penalty in judgment for sin. He does say all sinners deserve hell, but please understand that Billy Graham doesn't define hell the way Bible believers do. When asked in 1983 by the Orlando Sentinel about his view of hell, Graham said, I think that hell essentially is a separation from God forever, but I think people have a hard time believing God is going to allow people to burn in the literal fire forever says Billy. I think the fire, as mentioned in the Bible, is a burning thirst for God that can never be quenched. Ladies and gentlemen, I know for a fact that people, that the unbelieving world has a hard time believing God's going to allow people to burn in literal fire forever. Of course they don't want to believe that, but what does the Bible say? What did the Lord Jesus say? 
He described hell in Matthew 25, 41 to 44, as everlasting punishment, an everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil and his angels don't have a burning thirst for God that can never be quenched. When Jesus said fire, he meant fire. That's why he said in Mark chapter 9, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It's better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. He said, If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He says in Revelation 20, That eternal hell is a lake of fire, where they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. In Revelation 14, it's where the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. But the false prophet Billy Graham refuses to believe that. In essence, says that the Lord Jesus is a liar and the Bible is a lie and that we should believe the Pope instead. Sadly, folks, Billy Graham's apostasy doesn't end there with his view of hell either. In 2005, during an interview with Larry King, Graham repeated that he is welcoming of all religions. He said, I love them all. I welcome them all. Love to be with them. I'm friends with all of them. He said, for example, I just talked to a man in New York City. He was a Mormon. And I've loved the Mormons for years. And yet there is a big divide between the Mormons and some of the other groups. But I have great friends among the Mormons. And the same among the Catholics. Of course, I loved Pope John Paul II. So Larry King asked Billy Graham, What about those like the Jews and Muslims who don't believe in Christ? Graham replied, That's in God's hands. I can't be the judge. So King replied, you don't judge them? And, and Billy Graham said, no, going to hell and all that. He just doesn't believe that. In a 2006 article, the managing editor of Newsweek magazine, John Meacham, asked Billy Graham whether those who belong to religions that reject Christ as Savior and secularists will be saved. Graham's reply was that those are decisions only the Lord will make. He said it would be foolish for me to speculate on who will be there and who won't. He said, I don't want to speculate about that. Ladies and gentlemen, if Billy Graham would just read the Bible, he wouldn't have to speculate. God doesn't mince words in his word, the authorized King James Bible. The Apostle Peter preached to the Christ-rejecting Jews in Acts chapter 4, and he said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. By the way, folks, Billy Graham knows that verse. And he also knows John 14:6 because he quoted it in his recent video where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But the universalist, Billy Graham, apparently believes that the cross of Christ provides a universal atonement, even for false religionists, and that somehow everyone in the world comes to the Father through Christ, whether they believe in him or not. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said in Mark 16 that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And in verse 16 he said, He that believeth not shall be damned. That's rather clear. The Bible says over and over, He who believes in Jesus shall be saved and unbelievers will be damned. But Billy Graham is one of many apostates in our day who refuse to preach the true gospel of Christ. This is no recent development for Billy Graham either. On May 31, 1997, Graham appeared on Robert Shuler's Hour of Power TV broadcast and revealed his true colors. Please listen closely to this clip from that interview. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? Well, Christianity and being a true believer, you know, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world, or outside the Christian groups. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And I don't think that we're going to see a great sweeping uh, revival that will turn the whole world to Christ at any time. I think James answered that, the Apostle James, in the first council in Jerusalem, when he said that God's purpose for this age is to call out a people for his name. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world, uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need 
something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. Did you catch that, ladies and gentlemen? Billy Graham said that God is calling people out of the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. He said they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. He said they may not even know the name of Jesus, but they know in their hearts that they need something that they don't have, and they turn to the only light that they have. That sounds like a mason to me. And I think that they are saved, Billy says. They're going to be with us in heaven. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Graham and Schuler are old friends, and there's no doubt this dialogue was scripted in advance. But at that point in the dialogue, Schuler acted surprised and shocked and questioned Graham to be sure he heard right. Schuler said, well, what I hear you saying that it's possible for Jesus Christ to come into human hearts and soul and life, even if they've been born in darkness and have never had exposure to the Bible? Is that a correct interpretation of what you're saying? Billy replied, yes, it is, because I believe that. I've met people in various parts of the world in tribal situations, and they have never seen a Bible or heard about a Bible, never heard of Jesus, but they believe in their hearts that there was a God. And they've tried to live a life that was quite apart from the surrounding community in which they lived. Okay, Billy, so they're going to be saved by works. Schuler tripped over his tongue at that point and said, This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There is a wideness in God's mercy. Graham said there is. There definitely is. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from the lips of these two emissaries of Satan from the lips of these two broad path preachers. There is a wideness in God's mercy. Jesus must have been wrong. The path to heaven is wide, not narrow. Graham and Schuler say, don't listen to Jesus. He's too narrow-minded. Ladies and gentlemen, this was not done in the corner. This was done on national network TV. Billy Graham's apostasy is no secret. So perhaps you can tell me why Moody Radio, with Janet Parshall Truth, and Christian media today in general, still venerates and honors and esteems this man as some great evangelist. I was hoping that perhaps in this latest video, in what's being called his last sermon, that perhaps Billy Graham would have come out and finally repented of his lifetime of compromise and apostasy. But sadly, the message in this video is the same message Billy Graham has always preached. It's a message every Catholic, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, Anglican, Episcopal, and Lutheran can agree with. Yes, he does say you must be born again, but he failed to recant what he said before, that babies are regenerated and born again through infant baptism in the Catholic or Lutheran or Methodist church. Yes, he talked about the cross, but he failed to mention that the person that hung on that cross was God in human flesh, the creator of the universe, not a lower created being or the brother of Lucifer, as the JWs and Mormons believe. He also failed to mention that if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Jesus of the Bible, that you will be condemned to an eternal hell that the Lord Jesus Christ called everlasting torment. By the way, Billy's son Franklin is no better. He said in 2012 when Billy endorsed Mitt Romney for president that the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association took the Mormon church off the list of cults on their website because he didn't want to call anybody names. Here's some news for Billy and Franklin Graham. The Lord Jesus didn't mind calling people names. He called false religionists of his day hypocrites, blind guides, and whitewashed tombstones. He said, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? I've got more news for Billy and Franklin Graham. The Lord Jesus would say the same thing today to the Mormons and to the Pope and to Joel Osteen and to Robert Schuller and to Billy Graham. Billy Graham is not a great evangelist. He's one of the most successful deceivers of all time. He has devoted his life to preaching a gospel of compromise, a false gospel, that there is no real hell, that all roads lead to heaven, that we're not to judge whether or not false religionists like Muslims and Hindus and Roman Catholics will be able to enter the kingdom of God or will have eternal life. And he has deceived millions the world over into believing that they don't need to come out of their false religion, that they can continue on the broad road that leads to destruction. The Lord Jesus did not say there's a wideness in God's mercy. He said, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads to life, and few there be that find it. If you have not already done so, then I hope you'll find that narrow gate. 
I'm telling you today that if you are a Roman Catholic, your baptism will not save you. The liturgy and the sacraments in the Catholic Church will not save you. Your priest cannot save you, and neither will the Virgin Mary or the Rosary or St. Anthony or St. Benedict. You must come out of that false church and place your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus alone as your only hope of salvation. If you're a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness, you need to believe in the true Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, who has a name above every name, including the name of Jehovah, by the way, and who said to the Jews before Abraham was, I am. That means, by the way, the same I am that appeared to Moses in the burning bush. You need to believe in the Jesus of the Bible, who said in John 8, 24, If ye believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. There is no salvation in Islam, in Hinduism, in Buddhism, or in humanism. None of the world's false religions do anything to take care of your sin problem. Your sins do separate you from God, and they condemn you to an eternal hell. And no amount of good works that you could ever do will ever take away the sin that condemns you. That's why the Lord Jesus went to the cross to die in your place, to pay your penalty for sin in your place. And because he was God incarnate, eternal God in human flesh, he could pay the infinite penalty for all those in every age who would hear this message and repent of their sin and place their trust and faith in him alone. And if you will do that today, then you can be saved. You can be born again to a new life here and now. And beyond the here and now, you'll have eternal life to a home reserved for you in heaven. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 10, He, meaning Jesus, was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I hope you'll do that today. And by the way, I hope Billy Graham will repent of his apostasy and do that today also. Because if he doesn't, he's going to find out what hell is really like especially since he's responsible for seeing to it that many false Christians remained on that broad road to destruction. Billy Graham said on multiple occasions that any man that calls Jesus Lord is his brother. Many others like Bill Bright and Pat Robertson and others have followed Graham's example in making this pathetically ignorant statement that flatly denies the very words of the Lord Jesus, who they say is their Lord. Remember what Jesus said? Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, Enter at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. We are in a day of great apostasy. The very day I believe that the Apostle Paul warned of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You need to be on guard. You need to beware of false prophets like Billy Graham, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. We're out of time for today. If you'd like to write to us, you can send an email to the True Gospel Broadcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's True Gospel Broadcast at gmail.com. Or if you don't have email, you can also write to us at Post Office Box 99 in Brooksville, Florida, 34605. Again, you can find us online at www.independencebaptist.com. We also have a sermon audio webpage at www.sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Sam Adams. Please join us next week on the True Gospel Broadcast. When the Lord willing, we'll be refuting the multiple false gospels and false doctrines of another apostate by the name of C.I. Schofield the acclaimed editor of the very popular Schofield Reference Bible. Until then, may the Lord bless and keep you in His grace.